Hello everyone, Chad Mancini here. Today I'm, I'm discussing ransomware. Now, those of you who follow the security landscape, you'll know that ransomware has been a big problem in uh, in any size of organization. Um, from small business to big enterprise, we're starting to see a rise in ransomware. Now, if you're not familiar with ransomware, Ransomware is a, uh, a virus that goes ahead and once your PC is infected, it encrypts all of your data. Um, anything from text files, pictures, uh, some of them are targeted towards text files, pictures, and stuff like that. And we're starting to see certain strains of uh, ransomware that encrypt the entire hard drive. This is a big problem because What's happened, what happens is, is that since the data is completely encrypted, there's nothing you can do to uh, recover from that. Um, there have been some ransomware strains um, that have been, uh, have been cracked uh, by security researchers. So, uh, and actually a couple of them, uh, the project or the people behind it uh, abandoned the project, so they released the private key. Uh, the way the encryption works is that there's two sets of keys. There's a private key and a public key. Um, and so without the private key, there's no way to decrypt the data. And that's what makes this, um, what makes this attack so, um, uh, makes it so good. Uh, in terms of uh, an attack uh, and so some of them <clears throat> some of them asked for a ransom of uh, Bitcoin actually all of them asked for a ransom of, uh, of usually it's Bitcoin and so that's where the whole term uh, stemmed from uh, which is ransomware so in this demo I have uh, I have two machines and between these two machines, I have a, sh a folder that's shared. Okay, so if I go to files, I, s I see some sample pictures and uh, just some empty text files. Okay, so this machine is sharing data with this machine through... Which is a typical uh, client server type environment. Imagine if this was a file server, say server, uh, you know, Windows Server or even a Linux server. And this machine has read and write access to the this folder, which is files. Now, um, this machine is not protected with an antivirus. And this machine is protected with a vast antivirus. Okay. Now, this scenario comes from some case studies where um, something like this did happen, where <clears throat> uh, it was a company with a contractor, and the contractor came with a computer that was uh, not protected by an antivirus, and they were infected with some ransomware. And so because of that, the ransomware exploits the fact that you have read write access to certain file shares so whatever uh the first thing it does is start encrypting local files and then after that it starts spreading and starting to encrypt any files that you have access to read and write access um so uh what i'm going to display is i'm going to launch the attack the uh in this case i'm using locky which is one of the strains that have not been cracked and either organizations who get infected either have to pay or restore from backups hoping that they haven't been encrypted as well um, or the data is lost okay so I'll just show you how this attack works so I'll launch I'll launch the the script or sorry the the virus Okay, so the first thing you'll notice is that, um, at least at the top file, uh, Locky is known to delete itself, 
uh, delete the executable and right now although you don't see it you start seeing some of the files as the virus uh, starts infecting the machine it starts deleting itself okay. if I start seeing some processes um, one that's out of the out of the ordinary is locky unpack Godzilla loader um, so right now though uh, that's this could be masked as something else usually it is okay. so we'll give it we'll give this a couple minutes here and one thing that uh, that's happening right now is that this virus is going out to the internet uh, contact it's phoning home and right now what's probably what's happening is, is that it's generating an encryption key and it's starting to encrypt files as fast as it can okay. we'll know that the machine is fully infected when the background changes and we get something that says that the files on the computer are fully encrypted. So I'll do this in real time, I won't pause the video, so you'll know uh, roughly how long it takes. Okay. And if you notice, the machine is acting, uh, you know, it's not slowing down or at all or anything right now. and so far we have all of our data okay the machine is now in is now infected and we are getting a warning for ransom saying that our f our files are encrypted with RSA 2048 and AES 128 ciphers okay. uh, we're we're getting um, we are getting something, uh, a message saying that we have to use their secret server or secret program to decrypt our data. If I go into my shared drive right now, all my files are encrypted. Now I want to display one thing here. This machine is protected by an antivirus. Okay. However, the files have just been encrypted by a virus. The reason why the, this antivirus would not pick up this activity is that we're using a legitimate, uh, a legitimate call. So we're encrypting files, which is not by definition here uh, with, this, with the signatures and everything. There's no virus activity happening. If I had the legit program that was used to that used to uh, encrypt data, it would be the same. Okay, so this is the weakest link at this time uh, in this machine uh, or in this network. Say this was a network of a bunch of computers. Uh, in this case, there's only two. So, but if I had 50, 60 computers, the weakest link to encrypt the entire file system is one machine without antivirus. Or if a ransomware that has not been detected, Locky is a well-known one. This is just for demo purposes. But if Locky has a new strain tomorrow and we don't have the signatures ready, this can very well happen. And all it takes is one machine to be infected 
and then that machine to have access to uh, the file server, which many do. Now, in this in this example, if I had my USB stick, my portable hard drive, even uh, if you have Google Drive or Dropbox or anything like that, as long as I have read and write access to that drive, I can encrypt the data like I have here. Okay. If you have any questions or comments about any one of these, uh, any of this process, please let let me know. If you have a question about any one of my videos, uh, you can leave a comment uh, or you can email me, sean at seanmancini.com or visit my website, www.seanmancini.com. Thanks for watching, everyone.